Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to Thinking Out Loud Thursdays with Sonia. That's me over my cup of coffee, which is right here. So let's do the ritual of taking a sip, first sip of the day. There goes. And before we start today's video, I would like to make a humble request to all of you. If you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel, then please do. It'll be a good, good motivation for me. And uh, if you like any of my videos where you think that you can take some key takeaways, there are some learnings that you can take, please do comment also on my videos. Um, so let's get started. Uh, so today's topic that I've chosen uh, basis my years of experience working in the corporate world, making friends at work sounds familiar we as humans we are very friendly people we like to make friends at work we like to go to places where we see familiar faces where we we connect very well with people right and if you actually look at it 24 hours in a day out of that almost 40 percent of your time goes at work you are spending more time with your colleagues than probably you're spending time at home and um, so that makes it even more, uh, uh, there's an even, even more need for making friends at work. And I think more than making friends, you would like to work in a company that, that has a very friendly environment. More than friends, uh, the company encourages you to speak your mind, don't hesitate, bring new ideas on table and interact with each other in a very transparent and open way. So that's the kind of work culture that you like going to office with. And there are a lot of studies that have taken place like Gallup or um, there is a social human resource uh, manage society human resource management uh, survey so a lot of other surveys that have taken place that clearly indicate that if you have friends at work or if you have a friendly work environment your job satisfaction is very high you like going to work your productivity improves your communication skills improve you're able to meet your deadlines you are not a problem uh, creator but you become a solution uh, solution uh, offering kind of a person so uh, let's see what could be the positives when you're making friends right uh, this video is all about whether it is a curse or it is a blessing for you so let's find out so what are the things that could be beneficial if you have a friendly environment or if you have some friends at work one thing that I can think of is mentoring and coaching so if you have friends at work uh, maybe you bring in a lot of years of experience and uh, you join a new company and suddenly you connect well with the other person you can coach and mentor the other person in terms of upskilling them in terms of guiding them if there is any issue that they're facing and vis-a-vis -vis, since you've joined the company new you're not even a year old in the company the other person may have lot many years in that same company and he or she can guide you in terms of what the company is all about what is the culture who are the key stakeholders in the company uh, to do your task very efficiently who are the key uh, people that you should seek out uh, assistance with who are the people you should be watchful of so uh, it's like good mentoring system going on right and it's good because uh, the company eventually is benefiting from it the other thing that I can think of is your uh, collaboration. So if as a team, you are very friendly with each other, you are uh, not hesitating in bringing your ideas on table, you know each other's strengths and shortcomings, you then complement each other in such a better way that you're able to do your task in the most effective manner, uh, not wasting time, not wasting the resources, not wasting the money of the company and uh, you're able to perform better as a team because you know each other and you know each other's strengths and shortcomings and eventually because you're very happy working together the happy index of the company goes up and eventually the happy index of the team also goes up your morale is very high right so you collaborate in a better way now the other thing that i can think of is uh, there is a lot of uh, social and emotional support because we need uh, somebody to talk to other than the work, other than the meetings, other than the presentations, etc. You need somebody to just connect at a personal level with. But how much of a personal connect you want to do? 
think about it because we are going to work that our workplace that is a place that is giving us our bread and butter so don't mix too much of personal stuff into your professional friendships because they are your professional friends they are not your neighbor friends or your childhood friends so make a very clear distinction when you're making friends at your workplace but eventually they become your support system because if you very you had back to back stressful meetings or you're pretty stressed out maybe your boss said something which didn't go well or you had say a budget meeting and uh, the other stakeholders of the company um didn't appreciate your ideas to that level and you're very stressed out so you can obviously back on your uh, you know you can just go back to your colleagues and say that okay fine let's just step out for a nicotine break or let's just take a coffee break or let's just go down to that uh, tea stall and have a cup of tea and come back i need some fresh air right it's nice to have that uh, uh, friendly environment and have those colleagues who have become very friendly with you over a period of time so it they they actually take care of your after work you can go for maybe a drink or dinner together these nice social gatherings with your colleagues turn out to be very effective um the other i can think of is that uh, networking because when you're friends with people they open doors for networking so if you supposing you're into sales and you want to reach out to a customer but you don't know how to reach out maybe because the customer is not available whenever you call and suddenly your colleague will tell you oh my friend works in that company or i know the hr head of that company or i know the marketing head of that company and suddenly you know you you like lit up and you say oh wow i was all through figuring out how to reach to that customer and now you you're able to help me out so these are very nice things because they are adding to your productivity they are adding to your learning they are adding to your growth and always remember the friends who are happy in your growth friends who are happy when you are doing very well in the company i think that's the kind of company you should keep because as human there's a saying we are always judged by the company that we keep so if we have friends at work who encourage us to perform better who actually help us wherever we get stuck who are very happy when we get promotions and increments and uh, they they contribute to our growth in the company they are the friends that you should be keeping not the friends who suddenly will pull you down who'll backstab you they'll be somebody else in front of you they'll bitch about you behind your back so beware of making those kind of friends right so uh, the other thing that i can also think of is that you're able to now after pandemic a uh, lot of companies still have a hybrid uh, work culture or they have a remote work culture still going on and if you have friends at workplace it because they understand the challenges that you're facing personally while working from home or in a hybrid work culture they are uh, more receptive to if there is a problem that you're facing and even if it's not a hybrid work culture you are at work and suddenly you have some personal issue so you can obviously bank on your colleagues to say that please can you represent me in that meeting i have this emergency i need to rush out to and that person will very happily do that and fill you in with whatever happened in that meeting so i think overall the companies which have a friendly environment there is their happy index goes up the productivity goes up uh, the revenues are always increasing uh, because the employees are not uh, part of the problems or they are not bringing the problems they are providing solutions most of the times they're figuring out solutions on their own and there's a lot of workload that gets reduced right now let's talk about what could be the negatives now there are also a lot of studies that have uh, indicated that um, so almost like there is a study which said 45% of the employees they felt that if you have friends there is a tendency of favoritism and bias and it's very natural because when we've made friends at work we we will uh, treat them differently so there is a preferential treatment that we will give them vis-a-vis -vis the other people from other teams or other departments please be watchful don't do that because uh you never know you might change to another team and if you were not supportive to them they may never become your friends 
they may never support you in whatever that you want to do so never get into favoritism and bias and i think the companies also should not encourage uh, this kind of a culture where there is favoritism and bias you should always be judged by uh, your uh, contribution to the growth of the company and not how many friends you've made in the company right there are two different aspects altogether ne never mix them the other is uh, another study indicated that 23% of the employees they felt that most of the conflicts that happen at work that happens because of friendships now imagine a scenario that maybe you're very good in making excel sheets or budget spreadsheets or you're very good in presentation decks or pitch decks and you see that you're people you you very friendly with or friends with they'll keep coming and overloading you with their work that please help me with this i I'm, i'm not able to i'm not good at this please help me so what happens is over a period of time you keep helping them with their job and your productivity as a person goes down because you are always helping them no harm in helping them but help them when you have time don't help them at the cost of your time where you need to contribute to meeting your deadlines that have been given to you and when you start saying no that is where the problem arises because then the same person will say you're not my friend anymore you don't give me time you don't help me out and that happens because you've not set the expectations right you've not set boundaries right in the beginning itself so please don't do that uh, because eventually uh, conflicts are not good being at a personal front if you've shared something with that person and if that person is no longer your friend they can use the information that you've shared with them against you so think whether you want to reach that stage or not right so moving forward um, apart from conflicts while uh, friends help you with a lot of emotional support but they also bring in a lot of emotional baggage you know they'll go on bringing in their problems troubles to you so you have your own work stress everybody has their work stress even if it's a very friendly work environment but when when somebody is bringing in their problems every day every week every month whenever you meeting them they're only talking about the problems that they are facing take a step back because we are all adults we are all professionals we need to know how to handle our shit we need to know how to handle our work and somewhere down the line you need to put a stop to it you need to set your expectations very right you don't need to overload you don't need to bring the personal thing right on top of your professional relationship so you need to tell the other person to say that you know i really whatever i could help you i've done that i think this is something uh i think you should be able to manage it on your own or maybe talk to somebody else who can give you a different perspective i'm busy i'm tied up with this so uh please set your expectations very right don't get into conflicts um because you've been very good friends with them now the other i couldn't think of is that um rumors so there's also a survey that has said that you know uh almost 76% of the employees either they are part of a rumor or they've heard a rumor in the company now that's not a very healthy uh thing in the company because uh, that's not only just going to kill the uh productivity levels team collaborations everything when it's going smooth it will become like a big roadblock so for example you have a friend now there's another team member from another team had some embarrassing moment right at the lunch table or uh, on some offsite retreat and your friend is going on making a mockery out of it is putting a little salt and green chilies and blowing it out of proportion is getting some kick out of it you as a friend should tell that person that you know i don't think you what you're doing is right you should stop doing that because such a rumor can happen with you also so how would you feel about it so i think when when your friends are getting involved into rumors or they are starting a rumor please be very very careful because if they are getting some kick out of rumors then you never know when they might make you a center of a rumor do you want that i'm sure no so when you're making friends at work 
just ask a lot of questions to yourself that how much do I want to communicate? How much do I want to share about my work, about my personal life with this person? Um, can this per is this person a personal, uh, like a positive influence on me? Or is this person a very negative person? Get to know people before you make friends with them. And my recommendation would be, be friendly with everybody. Don't create your favorites and buy, get into a bias or conflicts. Also, whatever that you're sharing with the other person, please keep in mind tomorrow if that person is not your friend, is that person going to damage your growth in the company? If the answer is yes, then don't overdo in terms of your friendship. Always remember, draw a line, set your expectations right, set your boundaries right and make sure you communicate those boundaries to the people that you're getting friendly with. And I think the companies, they often encourage these friendly uh, uh, gestures. They, they do these off-site retreats where they get people to talk because your guards are down. And nowadays, the companies do these retreats also to find out what the employees are thinking about the leadership team or about the company. And at that time, please don't say things that you might repent later because you don't want to get into trouble with your seniors, with your other colleagues who are there because you have to work, go back to work tomorrow again, right? On that note, I would end my Thinking Out Loud Thursdays. I hope you could take some key takeaways from my video. So before I end, just to recap, please be friendly with everybody. Set your expectations right. Before you make friends with people, get to know them completely. Ask questions in your mind and only when you're convinced, Please go ahead and make friends and be watchful. So on that note, let's end this Thinking Out Loud Thursdays. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's been uh, great interacting with all of you and having my cup of coffees with all of you. So won't take much of your time. Get back to work and weekend is round the corner. Have a nice weekend, all of you. Bye-bye.